Well, good evening. Um, this is not my night to come on usually, so I uh, welcome you to Environmental Coffee House. I am Sandy Shellis, your hostess tonight. And uh, well, the reason why I'm doing this tonight is I had offered to go on to the Natural Progressive. Oops. You know who's calling me? I'm live. Who calls me when I'm live? Hambone. <laughs> okay. Throws me all off, and my heart goes out to Chris. Chris had an accident. She's going to be on Friday night, and maybe I'll go on with her. She um, is okay, but she's not okay. She's hurting. And I'll let her explain it all to you. Please, I just don't want everybody to um, to worry too much. She's she's just in pain, you know. She's, she's just in pain. Hi, Mark Roche. It's great to see you. So tonight... I wanted to talk about what I had gotten, I received, and I have wanted to do this for a very long time, and that was purchase some more books, which I have so many books already that I'd really like to not have, and they, they're going to go in the basement. They were like books from my career, things that are old, but a book. I got these beautiful books. I mean, I love books. And the problem is books are like, they're like fine wine. Only the wine you drink and it's gone. A book, a book, a book stays with you forever. It stays with you forever. And Paul King's North is... A pretty fascinating author. I'm sure a lot of you that are joining with me have heard of him. Hi, Cindy Seely. It's great to see you. Um, hopefully you can see, let, let's see, you can see the pink. <laughs> the, I don't know how I changed it to pink, but I changed it to pink because it matched the background. But anyway, so I, I'm going to introduce you to Kings North. If you don't know who he is, I have a little clip. Um, but I want to, I, I mean, people are joining us, but I want to uh, tell you a little about him. He, he was once an activist, like a lot of us are, and he, he was an ardent environmentalist. Now, I'm kind of taking this from the book, you know. Uh, he fought against rampant development and the deep, uh, deep depredations of a corporate world, like we all do, that seemed hell-bent on ignoring a looming climate crisis in its relentless pursuit of profit. Isn't this what we all talk about? But as the environmental movement began to focus on sustainability rather than the defense of wild places for their own sake, and as uh, the global conditions worsened, Paul grew, he kind of grew um, disenchanted with the whole thing. The whole movement. And it sounds a little bit like Planet of the Humans, doesn't it? How the disenchantment can happen. So he gave up what, what he saw as that false hope uh, that the residents of the first world would ever, ever make the kind of sacrifices that might avert severe consequences of climate change. And we're seeing them now with 100 degrees in the Antarctic. I mean, the Arctic in Siberia, we're seeing them. So he wrote a book called Confessions of a Recovering Environmentalist. And he is, he is, um, he's really interesting. He wrote the, the manifesto, this manifesto, the Uncivilization Manifesto, not very long. And then what I, I got was beautiful. I mean, the books, they're, they're just they're beautiful. Look at that beautiful book. It's better than a piece of jewelry. It's a material thing. But when everything is so technological and, and you receive these books, it just feels so good. And I got them and it made me feel good. And I need to take the time for me. I need to take the time to just sit outside and enjoy where it is 
because I have the ability, and so does everyone. Everyone needs to be able to try to sit with a book in the whole world. Everyone. Read a book. You got to get off the internet and read a book. So the book that I got, the one book is Refuge, ten, the, the 10 Years on the Mountain, issue 16. But that's not the one I'm going to read from. And there's a lot of different authors in this. Um, ah, and I'm trying to watch my um. You know, I thought about that the other day. When you're speaking, how linguistic, linguistic, linguistics, how can you practice not to use um, 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 that kind of thing? Some of those things you think about. So this book, this book is beautiful. It is just beautiful. These are pieces of art that even if no one ever visits me, I'm here. And I have my books and I'm going to find the time. The garden is almost in. There's things that uh, need to be planted and it is killing work for, especially for me, but it is just rewarding. And then I'm going to spend some time reading. And I really want to pour into these essays by so many people that br they bring on board, that Paul brings on board. But first, um, since people are joining, I really have no clue how many people I'm going to get tonight because I don't typically do this on Wednesday. Uh, but I thought, well, let's do something for, uh, for Chris, you know, I, 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 I hope she's going to be okay. And before I do that, let me say hi to, um, who's watching, uh, Kim. Hi, Kim. And CB and Jeff Pearson. Hi, Jeff. And uh, hi, Basil. Namaste. Okay, so let's get started. Let's. I'm sure Basil, you know who this, who Paul is, and the the, the books are beautiful. It's art. We're gonna get started, and let let me pull up this video. I'm only gonna play you this little clip. Tell me how the audio is. Let's make sure everything is really cool. Uh, let's go. You can't hear it? Hang on. All this time. Why? Wait, wait, wait. Can everybody hear? Let me stop it. Why does everything have to go shitty? No audio at all. Well, there you go. I guess next time I'm going to have to download because according to my software, now, see, now it's screwed up again. I don't understand. It's not muted. It's nothing. It, it just, I have no idea. Well, forgive me on that one. See, you know, <laughs> best laid plans. Well, I actually had no plans. Actually, no plans. It was a really good uh, clip. And I cannot imagine why it didn't, you couldn't hear it because it was loud and all that. Well, that's another thing to figure out. Sorry, guys. I suppose you were talking amongst yourself. Well, other than that, it was a very good clip. <laughs> There's nothing I could do about it. So let me pull him up. Uh, since I can't play you the clip, forgive that mess. He's not on Twitter. He's an author. But here's a quote I pulled up on Twitter that I particularly liked. And it was, we put ourselves through all kinds of inner contortions rather than look plainly at those things which challenge our fundamental understanding of the world. So he is a really freaking interesting. 
And there was a lot of, uh, you know, there was quite a bit on, but not by him. But there is this article where I got the background. He writes for Orion magazine, which I find uh, quite um, interesting. I've read Orion before. This is one of his uh, articles. It, it was Confessions of a Recovering Environmentalist, and it was pieces from the book. And But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to talk to you guys and profusely apologize for no audio for that. Hi, Jean. Uh, see who's with with us since I'm just uh, coming on. And Karen, hi, Karen. These guys are legends. They are Oceanic Estate. They are legends. It's great to see you all. So while you are joining, and since I now <laughs> know that I can't play YouTube clips for some reason on my software, we will find out. I think it, I, I have a feeling what it might be is a um interference there's other software i use when i go out through facebook and it's called restream and there might be something i didn't um i didn't change you know there's always settings so it's just another thing reminds me of my buddy nicole sandler who is wonderful talk show at five o'clock p.m eastern every day she's political talk and you know what she's definitely a one-woman show but she's got a lot of platforms i don't I only have two platforms. I'm just a little tiny nothing. And she's a she's a talk show host. And um, but when when she has some issues, I, I just don't feel so bad. I feel bad though for you guys that have to live through all this bullshit. I'm gonna read you the um beginning of this. And guess what, guys? Grandma is coming out to play. All right. Because it is dark, and you know what? <laughs> I give up. I want to be able to see. From the ashes. What is there left to say? When uncivilization, the Dark Mountain Manifesto, was launched a little over a decade ago, the mainstream rhetoric around environmental destruction and political breakdown was blatantly complacent. Climate change was acknowledged as a problem, but one to which new technologies and the good sense of political elites were sure to eventually find a solution. The financial crisis had shaken confidence in the global political and economic system, but the conventional thinking was that once we weathered the storm, it would be back to business as usual. Few were willing to hear about the lack of an imaginal and mythic dimension in our public discourse, and those who did were likely to dismiss it as irrational, aesthetic frippery. Now, there's a British word, frippery. Damn reading glasses, Kim said. <laughs> Karen, Karen's going to bed. I'm going to, okay, Karen, this is your bedtime story. <laughs> okay, um, here we go. Trippery was that last word. Things look very different at this end of the decade. After another 10 years of broken environmental and clim climactic records, after a year and a half of extinction rebellion protests and school strikes, after the worst bushfires in Australian history devastated over 170,000 kilometers of land and killed an estimated billion animals, after the insect apocalypse and the endemic microplastics and die-off of the Great Barrier Reef, there are signs that the full dismal horror of our environmental situation is beginning to penetrate the public consciousness. <sighs> Meanwhile, a wave of reality-smashing political grifters appealing to the most troubling elements in the public psyche to a degree few anticipated has swept across the western world and beyond while the global economy continues to stagger on average incomes flatlining while the wealthiest got even richer as establishment thinkers cast about for explanations they're beginning to suspect that their model of the human psyche as a rationalist unfeeling agent itself is a fantasy. With the terms of discussion having shifted so decisively, 
there is a sense here at the dawn of the 2020s of a change of chapter. As we said in the editorial of the 10-year anniversary issue, we are not going anywhere in the simple sense that we intend to carry on doing what we do. And also in that sense that going anywhere has never really been the point of the Dark Mountain Project. Rather, it has always been a space held open for voices that would otherwise have gone unheard. For perspectives that do not fit the accepted frames and for stories that speak to the reality of being human in these strange times. And in these terms, we still see plenty of work to be done. Gee, maybe if I start writing, maybe I could hook on with Paul Kings North. There is still a need, for example, for art and writing that helps us grieve for all that is being lost and will yet be lost regardless of where our course now takes us whether musing on the shadowed lessons of a dark goddess or pausing in contemplation over the corpse of a lone uh, rabbit or fox, there is still a value in hearing the quiet voices of a particular place, learning of the regenerative power in an absurd piece of ex-industrial ground and the resilience of the human spirits in time of flood, war, or sickness. But this is also a space to explore new aspects of our global predicament, foregrounding fresh ideas, images, and insights that might yet provide us with hope that arises once the grieving has been honored. 100 years ago, the notorious German thinker Oswald Spengler wrote that he had chosen the title of his epic work, The Decline of the West, at a time when the European-American world was infused with trivial optimism of the Darwinist age, but that if I had to choose again now, I would try with another formula to strike at today's equally trivial pessimism. So, it is that. While the Western world clothes itself in the latest Gothic apocalyptism, <laughs> sorry, apocalypticisms, we present to you a volume loosely themed on restoration. Perhaps the most interesting questions now, once we have accepted this true state of things, are: How should we live? What can be saved? What beauty and life might yet grow from the fallen trunk of this civilization? In these pages, you will read of the ways in which that very same mechanistic ideology that has caused so much harm has also blinded us to the ways in which ecosystems can be repaired. You will hear of how rivers can be helped to run again and hearts helped to heal, landscapes rewilded and broken bowls mended. Testimony will reach you from Iraqi marshes, Berlin parks, Canadian forests, and Japanese dormitories, alongside tales of rebellious communities, revivifying storms, and rejuvenated pigs. You will be invited to consider the pre aggregations of ancient people as they sought refuge and revelation and to take an astronomical perspective on our small world's happenings. Restoration is not a call to believe in techno fixes or the triumph of human supremacy. Nor is the idea of restoration a way to deny the damage that has been done or to pretend that we can reserve, reverse or replace the losses that have been visited upon this planet's human and more than human peoples. Rather, it has its roots in humbleness, in the ability to attend to the reality of the times so that we might see what useful action can be taken. At its best, restoration is a way to see opportunity within the grim crises that are unfolding, to find useful work to be done in the service of life and truth, to tend the much abused garden of our world back towards health and wholeness with careful and circumspect actions, always alert to the realization that what we had dismissed as weeds 
were actually the first shoots of new growth. And that's the Dark Mountain Editors. So I completely know what I will be doing this summer when I'm not doing everything else I have to do. There's not enough of me to go around. But I just, I am so inspired. And this is the readings. I mean, I, I could pick a reading a week and read it and discuss it like it's a class. It's, I mean, the book is beautiful. It's just beautiful. What a work of art. I'm really happy. I, I am Susan Jowsey the Psy, and she photographs the um, a, a, a photograph a chrysanthemum stone. I don't think you could see it. Oh yeah, you can. Look at that. It's just so nice. So there you go. Tonight is it's book night, and a video you couldn't see, and a discussion that we're gonna have for a little bit. And then we're going to bid you adieu. Just came on to have the um, the nice discussion and see what everybody's saying. Hi, uh, Veg. You were just listening. Chomsky, a.k.a. Gandalf the Wise. Hi, Rich. We were given everything we need to prosper. It isn't enough. Um, <laughs> that's behind me. Looks like a bunch of strange dildos. Well, let's see. It came from... <laughs> came from Orion magazine. I'll show you where I got it from. I stole the strange dildos from their article, um, Life versus the Machine. And Paul wrote it. And he, I, I, I don't think you guys want another narration, but it looks like a good article. I'll put the links in. I did not read this one. I just liked the picture. To me, you know what it looked like? It looked like it looked like Seattle, <laughs> you know, or, or a city um, of the future. Actually, it, it's plastics, you know, it's plastics. But that was a good comment, Forrest. Uh, Hans, we're not going to go there. Hans says, what's a dildo? <laughs> Hans, if you need to be explained, I, I can't do it for you. Oh, Jean says, Forrest, <laughs> it, it is a Rorschach test. <laughs> yeah, right? It's a Rorschach test. It's very interesting. That's another thing I just love to find these backgrounds. And you find a background and it just looks, it's it's neat to play with the, the software when it's working. You know, today, uh, again, I wasn't expecting to do this, but I felt so bad for Chris and I wanted to hop on with her and she can't even do her show. So, um... I had to go all the way up to Buffalo and all the way back and uh, up. Um, and I said, why not? Why not? So what are we having in the chat? It looks like Kim and, and Forrest. Wait, wait, wait. Let's see the comments. Um, Basil said, Jean, we are the same to Gaia as the coronavirus, just another part of the whole. Absolutely. And Kim said, Gaia is watching and waiting for all of us to love. If only it would be that simple. Is that what Forrest was saying? Jean, that's what I saw, what you saw, a cityscape from the future. Yeah, that's what I saw. You know, kind of like the Jetsons, maybe perfume bottles, you know, the creativity. Forrest, you disagree with Kim. Either you have a loving attitude or not. You can't blame Gaia or expect it from her. I think it's just a feeling Kim respects and loves her, of course. I think it's just a feeling. Um, Hans, come on. You really don't know what that is. Somebody tell him. <laughs> Somebody tell him. Uh, of course, we, we all here respect life. Forest Dweller, you're an amazing person. You're one of my heroes out there. Wildlife biologist, you. And he makes videos. And Basil makes videos, too, of his beautiful homestead. Yep. And Veg, it's nice to see you, Vegematic. I, um, you know, I was going to take a, a chance and test and start a Skype call in the middle of this and copy the address and see if anybody's interested in calling in with me to see if it works. 
I have no idea. I don't know. I can try it. Um, I gotta, ah, there I said it again. Dare I say, um, again. I gotta look for, I'm gonna look for Skype. And if it, if it works, I'm going to try to create a call. It's called, it says, I'm doing it. Meet now, meet with Sandra, copy the link. All right, so if I copy the link and put it in here, it goes right there and start call. Okay, let's see what happens. I have no clue. It's on Skype. And if somebody clicks in to join me, that would be like really neat. And we could see if it happens. Come on, somebody. I put in the link. Somebody want to come in with me? It's waiting. See, it's waiting right there for you. I see the, I see the, um, see now that I said I want to pay attention to, um, I'm saying it way more than I ever do. So nobody wants to come with me, even though I put the link in there. How about you, Basil and Karen? Forest dweller. Why don't you come with me? You don't, you know what? Put a, a mask on if you don't want to be seen. All right. Well, I guess if nobody wants to come with me, I have to figure out then how to get the Skype down. Okay, I got the Skype down. It's still open. So there's the there's the address. And it would really be great if somebody wanted to uh, test with me. All right. I mean, yes, I could read a whole other article, but I'm going to put the links in. You can read them yourself. Hello, DJ123. And I know Roz is sleeping. Dee Dee. Hi, Dee Dee. Dee Dee, you want to come on with me? Dee Dee Sunbabe could come on with me. That would be kind of cool. Somebody. I know, Gene, it's okay. I, I, uh, and. <laughs> oh, don't be sorry. You ignited a great conversation about dildos. <laughs> Come on, we're all grown-ups on this, right? Pretty much when I look at the analytics, we know. Oh, so nobody knows how. Okay, you're on your desktop with no camera. All right, well then, tonight we are not doing Skype then. Nobody wants to test with me. And come on. And you, oh. Well, Mark, Mark. Mark is driving 92 miles an hour. You know, Mark, I know you're out there. Where are you, in Arizona? You're driving away from the... Well, you were driving the Grand Canyon one time. Driving away from the goddamn virus. And... Uh, let's see here. Basil said, I know nothing about Skype. It was a mess, mess doing Zoom. It's so easy. It's so easy. I love you, too. Hans said, there's a report... Out that say they are cutting down forests so they can plant new trees that <laughs> environmentalists have paid for. I'm sure I could find a link. And it doesn't it sound insane? We had an article up on, and maybe I could find it on Environmental Coffee House Facebook page about the planting of trees and how it 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 it's so much. It's a great idea, but it's a lot of monoculture. Oh, wait, S Skype wanted me to say, I saw something, but no, it's not anybody joining me, I don't think. It wants to send alerts, sounds, and icons, and I don't want to allow it to, and I'm not going to allow it to. There's nothing I hate more than all that shit. If I saw, if I saw um, somebody, I would see somebody on, so. Okay, well, listen, yeah, listen, Mark. You better pull over if you're going to text. Forest Dweller said, yeah, Jean and Sandy has about 3,000 of them. Okay, wait, what do I have 3,000 of them? I don't have $3,000. I don't have 3,000 trees. <laughs> Veg. Hey, Kim, almost a better man. I guess uh, we men are obsolete. <sighs> men are not obsolete. Yeah, uh, right, Hans, monoculture. And it stinks. 
I will have a surprise for you guys about I, I, I'm working on 40,000 different things and everything is, is, is takes me a long time, but I've got footage of the lumber mill. I've got footage of a farmer's market, which I call slash, um, here we go again, slash Trump rally. <laughs> so I've got, I've got quite a, quite a few things up my sleeve, but right now what's first is, is is getting it done so we have what we need and it hurts i whine too much oh let's see hi dj what did you say we planted eight thousand trees on the farm so far that's but see that's fabulous you're doing it the great way don't worry lots of varied species growing now birds and animals like you wouldn't believe like a miracle well, can you write to me at environmentalcoffeehouse at gmail.com and send me some pictures? Or if you're on, that it's like a miracle is right. We planted one apple tree and it felt like, um, oh, forested monoculture is not such a big problem as it made out to be. Well, you are a biologist. So it does, okay, monoculture will take in CO2. It is a forest. But it's much nicer to have a mix. And the, the other thing that, and I'm not, I'm not a biologist, you know, I'm a citizen scientist. But the, uh, the, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, the lumber mill. That what I couldn't stand was all the trees that I saw there. And I, I'll make my creation in my video and, and you'll see it. How do you do Skype? Skype is really easy, Basil, I'll teach you. Not now, obviously. Nobody's coming on with me, so I can actually cut down the Skype. Okay, well, it's gone. I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to try to get rid of it. Quit Skype, I don't think it's quit me. Nope, it's gone, so nobody can come on with me now. Hey, I tried, right? I tried. All right. Uh, Rich, you've rewild your acreage, and the trees plant themselves absolutely they do well we have one to plant but they do plant themselves and after we had a tornado i may not be alive to see what grows back in the place but some of them have brought uh brought themselves back to life hi wolfgang you're too scared to skype all right well i'm gonna teach somebody it won't be tonight that's all I, I now have to figure out why YouTube doesn't work for me to play you a video, which annoyed the living hell out of me, to tell you the truth. And yeah, I, I'm happy tonight. Okay. Let me tell you, I hurt like a mother effer before. I went into that garden and I picked weeds after I came home from the doctor's appointment because I feel like it's a compulsion to make sure this goddamn thing doesn't overgrow because last year it did. I was like laying in bed, and I just could think of nothing but poor Chris. She's in a way more mess right now than I am, and I want to go out with her. So she can't, so I'm doing this for her. There you go. That's why I guess I'm happy. Uh, I have a good cup of coffee. I made it home <laughs> in one piece today, and that's that. And I, oh, and I took footage again, so I, I have a whole lot of footage of my own, so I don't have to be scapping off people's YouTubes. I have my own. Forest Dweller said, I'm not advocating monoculture. Of course, you're just telling us, you're educating us. It's the people who are trying to stop it, who destroy a lot of nature here. It's often a dumb excuse to interfere with nature. Okay, that's over, you're in Holland, right? Uh... And, of course, the healthiest ecosystems, Basil said, are the most diverse. Yes. And I need some fruit trees. <laughs> I, I, I need one more uh, one more apple tree, and I would really like, I don't know what, something. Basil, give me an idea of what kind of fruit tree is going to grow well around here. It's been such a crazy summer. Rich, my, um, my neighbors are Amish also. They think you're crazy. <laughs> They're right. Well, we're all bozos on this bus. If whoever gets that, then my demographics and analytics on YouTube are right. If you get that, <laughs> we're all bozos on this bus. And I wonder how many of you watched Antonio last night talk from the heart. 
talk data and statistics. If you didn't, you should go back and see it. And I don't have it to show you now, but I have a prototype of a coffee cup I designed using Mindy's logos, which is, it came out absolutely beautiful. And we're not sure what we're going to do yet, but I would think that everybody would love to have a coffee cup. And I used to send people t-shirts and uh, it was, it was such a great gratifying feeling to give and help people out with all of the things that I used to do with that I can't do anymore. It hurts. It hurts. Pear trees, pear trees in Western New York, in, in our um, atmosphere, can't be that much different than maybe apples and the apples, the apple trees doing really well. I wish I had uh, taken a picture of some of the stuff I have around. I, I didn't think we would go from, but yet it was a good segue because what I read from Paul, Paul kind of just does segue into what we're all, a lot of us are doing with planting. And another thing, at the doctor's office today, I was so impressed. The young girl today, the young the young lady that was uh, taking my vitals and all that crap, has a garden, an urban garden. A lot of people are starting to realize they need to be more self-sufficient from this coronavirus, and they're growing gardens. It is. It was a great feeling. Oh, CB, you couldn't Skype me because I shut it off. I'm sorry. I, I, you didn't see that. I took the, I took it away. Oh, okay. What's going on here? Oh, cherry tree. Mm. Cherry trees. I want to find a partridge for your pear tree. <laughs> Hi, book hermit. A partridge for the pear tree. Uh, <gasps> I was asked to keep this a secret. Four little bad. Don't worry. Nobody sees my channel. Uh, uh, nobody's there is going to see it. Four little badgers born in the dens I discover. Four little bundles of joy. <laughs> we'll have to go to his channel and watch those four little bundles of joy. I was thinking about that tonight when I was outside before I came in. Uh, to drag the goddamn hose and hook it back up. The thing weighs 100 pounds and that's another reason why I hurt and I shouldn't have done it. I'll be in bed all day tomorrow. <laughs> Anyway, there was rabbit and we have a family of four foxes, but the rabbit that lives outside listens to me as I talk to it like a kooky old lady who's talking to a cat and the rabbit sits there, just sits there. And I go, hey, well, maybe, you know, I'm not going to make an idiot out of myself and tell you how I sound with these cats, but the rabbit I'm almost to where this particular rabbit stays. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's really cool. So I, I'd say that this is what he's talking about. He's talking about we're living life. We're here till we're not, like I say. And reading to you from Paul King's North was a pleasure. I wish the video worked. Uncivilization. I suggest uh, this was a, a fast one. And then they share the writings of a lot of people in a beautiful book format. I'm sure you could get it online, but I wanted the books. So thank you guys. Raspberries. Yeah, I got to go out there to try to get berries after this rain before the deer get them. But I, it's very hard. It's, it's really hard to fight with the deer. You love cherries. I love cherries too. There was a cherry tree in, in, in my memory banks. And I think that probably maybe a cherry tree might be a good idea. All right. You guys gave me an idea. Why not? Well, I don't think I'm a substitute for Chris, but I wanted to have an engaging discussion and bring to you, um, I don't know if all of you had heard of Paul King's North and Dark Mountain. I'm sure because we're in this genre. But I really look forward to it and I'm going to give myself the time to read every single thing here. That's my summer. Promise to myself when I'm trying to relax and de-stress because life is stressful. Basil said, Sandy, start with elderberries. R yeah. 
I like elderberries because they're a great antioxidant. Raspberries, apples, cherries, pears, plums. We live in berry heaven. One year, Doug, he, he put in, uh, oh, what was it he put in? Blueberries? He never surrounded them with the fencing like he was supposed to. And those blueberries were uh, just the treat of all the rabbits. <laughs> you know, they were the treat. The rabbits enjoyed our property. So it didn't work. But we, but it will work now because I, I've learned that within my limitations, which are many, I can still do things. And we all can. It's difficult for a lot of us, but try. Try. If I didn't try, what's the purpose? What's the point? Veg says, I'm in the city, and since they developed ruin, the surrounding areas, wildlife is coming into the city, often with tragic results. That is enough to make me cry. I see roadkill on my way up. On my way back, when I have to go up to Buffalo, and I hate it, it is it is enough to really, I, I try to just go like this with my hand and not see it. It is hard for all of us to see that civilization, the trappings of civilization. You can't get away from it. Today, when I was up there, it's like every little last shred. This isn't even the city. This is the suburbs. Every last shred is being built into something, even with a pandemic. Even with a pandemic, it was, I couldn't wait to get the fuck out of there and get home. I couldn't wait. It was, it was traumatic. I hate going to, to anywhere that the only redeeming thing about today was I saw my kid and gave her a head of lettuce that I grew. <laughs> that was the redeeming part of my day. Socially distant. I think it's friggin' hard not to hug your kid. But she's 31. I don't know if she wants to hug me anymore like she used to. Mark, are you? You're not on, are you? We are not together in a genre, Sandy. We're together in a grand falloon. What? Okay, I like it. We're in a grand falloon. Grand falloon. Check out Greenhouse in the Snow on YouTube. Can grow tropical plants with geothermal if you have some space. Interesting. Gosh, there's so many interesting things. In I've been watching Ecocentric Homestead. I've been watching some of the Prepper channels, but Hoople's Cat, he's really good, but he's a nurse in Toronto. Hoople's Cat. H-U-P-L-E-S. Hoople's Cat. He's very good in Toronto. His videos are uh he's on the front line of the coronavirus. So I like him. I would highly recommend checking him out. But the gardening videos are great because, I mean, I could say before I met Doug, I was a vegetable garden moron. I had planted flowers and all of this beauty I had done in my life, but I didn't plant vegetables. And now vegetables are like the thing, you know, so I, I, I made the transition. I'm sure a lot of us have. <laughs> We've made the trans the transition. All right, guys, it's 44 minutes of me blabbing, and I'll have a sore throat. Thank you, guys. I have no parting video, so I'll just play the regular old shutdown video. And thank you all for coming. Please join the Pro uh, Natural Progressive Friday Night This will for her healing show. Uh, she needs it. And I hope I can join her if I can, you know, spread myself. I, you know, you use the word spread yourself thin. And boy, I went to the doctor today and they don't call that quarantine 19. It's not a lie. <laughs> oh, and I did not find my wedding band yet. That's a whole other story. It's out there in the front yard somewhere. <sighs> Good night. Y'all rock. <laughs>